Gabriel here. Ah, hello, Gabriel. Hello. It's Gabriel from one of our sprint teams in 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 our early two thousand nineteen sprints. So, uh, <clears throat> and that team is still uh, going strong. So, uh, Gabriel, uh, maybe you will be the one updating us a bit later on the call. I look forward yeah, to that. absolutely. Sounds good. <laughs> sounds sounds good. Um, I just got a message, Lars, that um, Bernard is driving. He's online. Ah, uh, Bernard is driving. Uh huh. Oh, he's absolutely. in a meeting. Absolutely. Drive safely, Bernard. No problem. No problem. Drive safely out there. Um, I'm curious um, who M is. I see a beautiful letter M on my screen here. <laughs> Who may you be? Ah, it, that remains a mystery. <laughs> I think I think I think we'll get started um, in the interest of time. There's so much I want to share, um, and I want to hear from each of you also during the call uh, because this is a community call and the community is us it's you and and us so that's what i wanted to be about um, we also have uh, quite a few new members uh, in our uh, in our community um, and uh, uh, on the call with uh, olena welcome olena uh, and, and when I find out who M is, maybe uh, I, this is also new. Mani, okay. <clears throat> uh, helps, needs helps with the webcam. Okay. So we'll, we'll see um, if Mani um, can get the video to work. Um, <clears throat> but I wanna get started uh, uh, giving a bit of an introduction uh, to the community and a little bit of history, a little bit of context for, for the community. And, and uh, then I want to get back to us and, and hear from each of you uh, how you're doing and, uh, and what you're working on uh, that can uh, potentially, I'm sure, be of help to the future of education because that's, that's what we kind of gather around, at least one of the major themes uh, to, uh, to do things differently and better. And, um, <clears throat> and uh, this community is full of amazing people who are working uh, to improve things, to make future uh, of education a whole different experience. So this is, is really exciting to hear from everybody. We'll have time to do that. And then I have an ideation session that I want to, you to be part of um, closer to the end of the call here today. Uh, I need your uh, amazing brains uh, for a little uh, ideation session. So that's, that's my ambition for the call today. <clears throat> and um, I know the typical pitfall is that I talk too much and spend too much time, but I, I wanted, since it's been a while, since we've been together as a community, uh, then I just wanted to give, uh, especially our new friends in the community, uh, kind of an, an update on what has been happening so you better understand the context and uh, so you can feel the excitement uh, from each of us and passion for what we are trying to do here. Uh, so with that, I'm just going to share uh, some visuals and I'll be uh, speaking over those visuals. And, <clears throat> and I will try not to take too much time doing this, but I found it important to kick us off uh, probably as a community for the second half of this year with a lot of new activities that are, uh, are in the pipeline. And uh, I'm, I'm so much looking forward to that. It's been, there's been a slow period recently, given that um, everybody I met, including myself, have been <laughs> super busy recently on other uh, aspects of life, which is amazing in many ways. <clears throat> so um, 
And here we have Justina, um, our our wizard and uh, and and uh, an amazing uh, partner in crime in this community. <laughs> Thank you Good to see you back from your uh, from your trip. Thanks, thanks a lot. <laughs> we'll get back to uh, hear from everybody uh, later on the call. I'm going to now start sharing uh, my screen and uh, just make sure that I can share also computer sound when we get to that part. There we go. Go. All right. So you should be seeing my screen now. And uh, you will see here that I'm going to give you uh, a little bit of our uh, background as a community. And then I want to hand back to each of you uh, to uh, update us on what have you been up to and what's going on uh, in in your life when it comes to education and the future of it. Then the ideation session, then we'll discuss it and then we'll close off for today. To so those of you who are new uh, in our community, I'm Lars and forget about my family name, it's long and complicated and Danish, uh, being from, uh, from Denmark where I live uh, now. Um, I'm a, an entrepreneur really with a super nerdy uh, engineering background uh, that, and I turned coach and I turned into you know that intersection between technology and humanity and what future is we really want so this is where I'm playing today I'm super excited getting up every morning early go for my morning run so I'm full of energy to do what we have to do and we have to do it together, which is why I'm so excited to have each of you. I just listed here, showed my personal massive transformative purpose. And for those of you who don't know that what that is, I have a video I can share <clears throat> where you can step by step develop your purpose at a massive scale. And mine is resourcefulness for breakthroughs in every individual and team. That's what I hope for the world and that's what I want to uh, contribute <clears throat> to the world, help everybody tap into that resourcefulness that, that we all have. Um, I'm not diving into all the dark uh, areas and, and challenges of education as it has been for many years. Just a few quick kind of uh, mentions of challenges that we are seeing and then I will stop exploring those rabbit holes with, because there are plenty of challenges but we cannot live in a world and continue to do that with hundreds of millions of children who are left without uh, the basic skill sets and capability of reading writing and doing um, math at a basic level we have to do things differently we have to solve these things and we can because we see opportunities in different ways to help each other thrive and build a better future we can use technology to do that but we can also change our mindsets so we create a better world where we get equal access where we get access to the to facts and to each other um, and to a growth mindset. So another st statistic uh, that I picked up from Gallup, this is from North America, but is probably representative of large parts of the world. 87% um, of adults dislike their jobs. So for those who have a job uh, and that want a job, they typically don't like it. It, they are not thriving, they are not enjoying their, their careers. And I'm not even diving into those jobs that are being uh, replaced by uh, technology, artificial intelligence and so on. And, um, but uh, there are very uh, clever people who have 
uh, known, for example, this fact for a long time. If you do not change direction, you may end up where you're heading, right? And I found myself often ending up where I was heading. <laughs> sometimes I was happy about that. And uh, sometimes I figured out I have to change direction. Now, um, this gentleman from the PISA organization, who were behind the PISA test, um, I found this statement from him uh, saying, significant changes are on the horizon because the modern world doesn't reward us for what we know, but for how we apply knowledge. So Andreas is uh, very right that there is significant change on the horizon. There's also a, a lot uh, of fantastic people working on creating that change. And I meet more and more people, entrepreneurs, parents, also educational institutions who are actively working on transforming so I agree that there is significant change coming and I want to be part of it. I want to be part of creating that. And, and I believe you're probably here because you want to be part of it as well. Just about an hour and a half ago, um, Charlotte uh, from, from our community, uh, she, she actually, <clears throat> when Michael Anderson from uh, the University of Sydney posted this in LinkedIn, uh, Charlotte uh, mentioned the Educate for Life in a comment. Uh, and now I'm connected to Michael Anderson as a, as a result. So I hope to catch up with Michael. Um, but he's meeting educators that are transforming their systems. So, uh, so it means that it is doable. And uh, he's making the argument that we keep hearing about it's, it's, uh, it's utopia. And it's, it's impossible, and we keep hearing that. Except it's not impossible. Everything is possible, and there are amazing institutions and people out there working to change things. I want to make sure that we manage to connect them, because if we work alone, we essentially end up giving up. Uh, we cannot work alone. We have to work together, which is really why this community keeps coming together. It's to support each other on that journey. Uh, so I'm very excited when, uh, you know, when Charlotte connected me to Michael Anderson and, and, uh, and I, I've been connected to uh, all of you uh, in a similar way. So this is fantastic. I, I just want to make it very clear that I personally think this is one of the most important statements that I can share. The primary ingredient for progress is optimism, right? We have uh, a lot of technologies that are now showing uh, that they can be part of changing things. Uh, but without the right mindsets, it's not uh, really going to happen or it's not going to have us part of it. Uh, so we need to be always injecting optimism into every initiative as a community, uh, this is at least how I see things and how I see that we can achieve results. Without optimism, uh, things are not really going anywhere, I believe. So we can have I, to inject optimism. Can I interject now, Lars? So another word, yes. way of saying it is hope. And, yes. and, um, and then it is those of us in leadership uh, um, positions or places with a, the awareness to take what it is that those are saying that is not so great or that is um, just so upsetting for them to um, take what it is that they say, hear it, acknowledge it, and, and then offer them uh, a question or a statement that brings them, that shifts their mindset back to or into hope again i agree i mm -hmm. fully agree thank you for adding that uh, and with with optimism we typically have hope as well hope is kind of lost when we are no longer optimistic i think um, and there's so much more to be added to what we need to inject into those around us but i also want to just mention 
uh, which is super important. It's that we need to make sure every initiative coming out of our community and that are being launched in the education space also help others to feel beloved and cherished and respected. And there was a, a quote, I, I forgot who actually said it, but that children don't hate math, they hate being intimidated, right? Exactly. So that, that's, a, that's a whole different paradigm. Um, and we can do so much to change the way we treat each other. Mm -hmm. doesn't, doesn't help us to, in, to bring a, 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 an incredible uh, innovative solution to market if we still don't um, cherish and respect each other uh, as part of the process. So there is a very deep human element here that we need to bring into everything we do. And we do that by nature. And that, that's what I feel from every one of you. And, and this is what we need to keep sharing so enough about that. I want to make sure that we achieve everything we want on the call. Uh, but this was a little bit about some values um, in our community. So a little bit of historical context. And we don't have that long history <laughs> to talk about, really. Uh, because on the 18th of December last year, we had our first introductory call. Um, where uh, fantastic people uh, joined to share with us some inspiration from their world. For example, uh, Raya Bichari, the founder of Op Academy, um, uh, came to uh, tell us about the, the problems in education and the opportunities. Um, and, uh, and, and you see Jerry here um, on a screenshot as well, Jerry Mikalski, uh, like Trey uh, is on the call today. Jerry has also been one of our fabulous advisors and contributors all the way uh, through. And we you know, look forward to continue that um, close uh, friendship and, and partnership. Uh, on the 23rd of January, we had uh, another community call. Uh, here you see Sean Hinton, the founder of Skyhive, um, which is an incredible, um, AI company that changes the paradigm away from what jobs could you work in uh, to what are the competences you need to develop. And, and the recording of that call is on our website under events. So go check it out. It's a, it's a really inspiring um, chat we had with Sean. Then we launched a 12 week design sprint or transformation sprint. And this was to give everybody an opportunity to first of all learn a sprint methodology that in 12 weeks uh, helps us to accelerate our research, our learning about what's happening in terms of new technologies, different models that business models, for example, that can be brought into new educational services. We did this research, then we did ideation based on this research um, on what could be interesting to explore and to test in, for example, a prototype out there. So we developed a whole uh, series of uh, new initiatives ideas that were brought into life and tested and, and sprint teams were forming kind of autonomously on their own in our online community platform, which I hope you're all uh, part of. And they worked uh, throughout this 12 week sprint. They came back uh, several times to present to us what they had learned, what they had uh, achieved and what their next steps were planning to be. But this the whole thing kicked off on 19th of February, 2019 with what we call an impact workshop. And the whole recording of this is, is on our website as well. We started ideation on 5th of March with, uh, with many actually new experiments in the way we, uh, I, I deliver sprints for a living. Uh, and transform organizations. That's what I do. And, uh, and but we also experimented in the way we deliver sprints uh, in so many ways in this sprint. So 
uh, Sway, which is a very innovative startup um, in in uh, in Vancouver. Um, join us and they let us use their um, AI platform that um, gives you a review on descriptions. If you have a description of a new idea, you publish that description on the Sway platform and you get, thanks to machine learning, you get feedback on your description and recommendations on how can you improve your project description. So we experimented with that and had some uh, interesting learnings and outcome from that. And the ideation went on um, and continued all the way through this sprint. <clears throat> Midway into the sprint, which was 26th of March, we all came together for a disrupt workshop. This is where the same teams came back to present to us what have they achieved what are their thoughts and plans from here on? And <clears throat> we had um, we had um, different ways of providing feedback to the teams, and they got they presented to us, and they each got feedback uh, after the presentation on separate uh, team calls. So the present the f feedback, as I'm sure you will agree, is a gift. It's a gift from those giving the feedback to those getting it. Uh, and I hope the teams found value in, in the feedback. Anyway, for sure they all came back quickly after with much more advanced uh, initiatives that they continued to work on. We, uh, we completed the sprint on 7th of May with a launch workshop where the teams that finalized, completed the sprint, came back and gave us some um, the final presentations of what they have achieved. Um, and a, a whole number of these teams are still going strong and are implementing out in the market and I couldn't be happier uh, for that outcome. So I'm, I'm still touching base with uh, many of these. I would be happy to connect with everyone who is interested around, you know, additional further support of these initiatives. All of this is available in our community platform. So if you want to check it out, what we have been doing and check out the recordings, go into our online community. Uh, platform to have a look at it. <clears throat> you can also benefit from this platform if you want to do some research on a topic because <clears throat> articles and publications and posts and are uh, available in the group that we call the public school library in the platform. All you need to go is go into groups and then find the public school library and then you, you just search. Here I'm doing a search for VR, for example. And then you see what people in the community, what members are interested in VR. You will find a list of articles. You will find uh, links to interesting resources. I'm just uh, showing another search here, which is uh, technology in uh, education. I'll just try to, to type correctly and then do a search and you can do the same when you're working on on something go in here and do a search and see what we have because we are uh, now today 199 people on this platform who are many are posting uh, and uh, and this is all available uh, to us all so why not deliver that as part of this call Back in January, I asked you what are the skills and personal attributes that you consider important for the future of education? And this is what you answered. So in addition to the growth mindset and, and making everybody feel beloved and respected and being optimistic, I think we need to consider if anything that we are working on is actually contributing uh, to to um, bring these skill sets into focus in our world. If we create a new service, a new initiative, does this help develop these skill sets in the world around us? Uh, 
right? So just wanted to share this because I just found it uh, during some research recently. And this is, uh, you know, really inspiring to look at. Uh, one outcome that came out of the sprint is something I've been working on with Kim Arazzi. And you may remember Kim from one of our uh, previous community calls. Uh, so, so this is the Century Sandbox which is an experience it's it, it was originally developed for for adults actually for businesses so uh, kim and i are uh, offering this also to to uh, to businesses to business leaders but we have <clears throat> developed a version for children as well and some of you will be interested in hearing more about this uh, but we'll do that on another call um, but this is really about helping children to experience what it feels like to have a growth mindset and being, uh, you know, being challenging assumptions and and so on and so forth, overcoming limitations and so on. We find it important to uh, to bring this into um, into every possible opportunity, also with educational institutions that we meet, we'll tell them about your work and, and this kind of work and what's going on here. So they can join us if they want and, uh, and be inspired and hopefully maybe pick up some of these projects and work with us. So feel free to share and uh, spread the word in your network if you come across one of our initiatives and one of your initiatives that makes sense to share with somebody you know. Now, <clears throat> the first thing Kim said when we uh, when I told her we're going to run the first uh, workshop for children in Copenhagen, and uh, Kim Kim said, um, you know, uh, uh, how do we do this in Danish? Uh, <laughs> um, <clears throat> I can do it in Danish, but I want Kim to do it. She's the master in this area. Um, it's not a problem, Kim, and I'll show you exactly how it's going to work. Here, let me just play a short video. Now, it's a pleasure to be here in Las Vegas to present to you. Now, I get invited to do keynotes across the globe, and while it's easy for me to be here in Las Vegas, it isn't always easy for me to travel across the world. And even when I do, I can't always speak the local language. Well, what if neither language nor distance mattered for me to deliver a fantastic keynote? What if technology could help me be anywhere I needed to be and speak any language I wanted? Well, it can. We are bringing together the power of mixed reality and Azure AI services to create a truly game-changing experience. What you're about to see is an exact hologram of me wearing the same outfit that we recently captured at a mixed reality studio. And I don't speak Japanese, but what if I wanted to deliver my keynote in Japanese? Using Azure AI technology, I can translate my English into Japanese and train it to sound exactly like me, the same voice tones, those same inflections. Now we brought this together, my hologram and Azure AI, to show you what's possible. So first, I'm gonna put on my HoloLens 2 here, and then we'll flip in the room to the special camera so you can see exactly what I'm seeing. Let's get started. First, let me introduce you to Mini-Me. There she is, my perfect holograph. And thanks to the power of HoloLens 2, she just floats right with me. I'm literally holding my hologram, so natural. Now she's a little small to do a keynote. So let's get her up so she can do full-size Japanese keynote. Render keynote. ホログラムになることには本当に驚くべきことがあります。私たちは最新の複合現実キャプチャ技術を使用し、私のホログラムを作成しています。実在の人物をホログラムとして見たことがあるかもしれませんが、私が実際に日本語を話しているのが新しい
。これはニューラルテキスト読み上げと呼ばれる最新の人工知能技術、いわゆるニューラル TTS を使用しています。私たちは自分の声の録音を使用し、私のように聞こえる私自身の個人的な音声署名を作成します。日本語からフランス語、ポルトガル語まで話せます。今、この技術は私たちが働き、遊び、生活する方法に関して、世界中の国境や障壁を取り除くことができると想像してみてください。まさに SF が現実になるところです。This is mind-blowing technology, and what you just saw was my life-size hologram, my exact replica, rendered here in real time, speaking Japanese with my unique voice signature. To do this, we use mixed reality technology to create my hologram and render it here live. Then we use Azure speech-to-text capability and English transcription to get my speech. Then use Azure Translate to get the speech into Japanese. And finally, applied neural text-to-speech technology so it sounded exactly like me, just speaking Japanese. And the most amazing part: all of these technologies exist today. The future is here. Isn't that incredible? There is、uh, no excuse for not sharing knowledge anymore. So now. That was the the historical context of of our work, and hopefully a bit of inspiration as well. Now it's time to get to know each of you, and, and、uh, hear, for example, where you live, why you're part of our community, why is education important to you, and what are you working on? And now, if you are in one of our sprint groups from our from beginning of the year sprint, then let's hear about. How that is going, and how we can help you.、Uh, so I'm going to stop sharing here. We can look at each other、uh, again on camera. And I think I think if we、um, spend about five minutes per person, I think we can accomplish what we want on on the rest of the call here. So.、Um, Let's.、Uh, who, who wants to begin? Introducing themselves. Any volunteers? Olena, wonderful. Thank you for being the first one to raise your hand there. Okay. I might not spend five minutes,、uh, but I would like to introduce myself. <laughs> I'm Olena Yatsushin, but Olena will do forever after. I am working with MB Dellenbach、uh, with、um, her projects and her initiatives, so I'll let her do more of the talking. But for myself,、um, the reason I became interested in what MB is doing, and I'm becoming more and more fascinated with this this whole. Turning education on its head and doing things a different way is because all of my life,、um, starting from school, I was always different, which ended up being a plus for me because I ended up in the performing arts. I sang professionally for many years. I acted. I, I'm from a Ukrainian background, so I was from Ukrainian immigrant parents, and I didn't know a word of English when I went to school, and communicating and. Being connected to people was very important to me, but a lot of that was blocked by various systems that were set up, by various ways that classrooms were set up, by various ways that one was supposed to be, supposed to do things. So I ended up many times, especially in elementary school, in the corner because I misunderstood what I was supposed to do. Being sent to the corner, there were very many interesting things, much more interesting things to envelop and 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 to to look at and to participate with, and it gave me joy. But then I realized afterwards that I that wasn't what I was supposed to do. <laughs> so,、um, I grew up、um, just feeling energies, feeling、um, feeling that there was a different something different about me, but. 
thinking that there was something wrong with me all the time because I didn't quite measure up. I always did very well. I did have good classes, good grades. Um, I loved everything that I did, but somehow it never really quite fit. And so what it did do in a positive way is that it, it enabled me to want to inspire. And so for me, a big word for me is inspire. When I write uh, somebody or to tell myself, to tell, tell them about myself, I say, I live to inspire. And that's, that's an overall description of me. Um, and as far as the, the education and all of the things that you've been doing, I've, I, it's still all overwhelming because I'm reading, I'm starting to read about it all. And it's, it's so much to take in, but it's amazing. And I'm so, so, so happy and so glad that MB um, invited me to this and got me involved uh, with her projects, with her initiatives, and that now I'm part of this community. And uh, I'm really, really looking forward to how this will all develop. And I know there's, an, there's endless possibilities. And the fact that there's a community that cares about how people feel, that respects people, is kind, um, and doesn't see that as a weakness, but sees it as a, as a positive and a, and a very necessary thing to have uh, in this day and age, especially now. Uh, and putting that all together with new technology, which again, from where I come from and my background, technology was evil. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's refreshing and wonderful to see that it's not and that there's a lot of potential. So that's where I'll end. And I, I'm very grateful to be here. We are very grateful to have you. And it's very hard to follow that introduction, Lena. <laughs> Thank oh, you very I much. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all this. That was inspiring. So you're definitely living up to your purpose here. Uh, one step at a time. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Who, who wants to go next? It's hard right after this wonderful introduction. But everyone here can, can do it. <laughs> Um, Lars, I, I can speak somewhat to, to, to some of that as a, as a segue. Um, Olena and I met many years ago singing in a pro, uh, one of two professional groups here in Canada. Uh, this particular group is called um, the Elmer Eisler Singers. And uh, there's just something about, um, about Olena that was uh, so special. And she um, created a... Uh, leadership within the group that uh, was beautiful, understated, warm, um, inviting, inclusive. Um, and then it, it brought the group being basically Canadian uh, and brought all of us to uh, learn more about her nationality and about her people and her music and celebrating Ukrainian Christmas. Um, it, it just, it created a whole new level of, of what al already was a, a, a lovely um, sense of, of being for a higher purpose. Wonderful. That was, that was equally beautiful. <laughs> wow, you, you, you guys are doing well here. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, many years apart, um, and then on my journey, having found you, Lars, through uh, Salim, Ismail, uh, inspired by him and uh, his work in the, the community, uh, Peter Diamandis, it was, um, oh, there's so many um, more of you, but I learned that through, I, I found the community through, um, one of our great Canadian treasured media moguls. Uh, and uh, that is, um, I was through, you know, what was before TED Talks, or at least I believe it was before TED Talks, was, um, uh, was uh, Idea City here in Toronto. Um, and that's where I 
thought I'd first heard Selim, but then I realized I'd actually heard his TED talk in 2016, and he spoke my language. <laughs> Uh, and I knew that there was something there. I was in the meantime on a, a very interesting journey uh, myself and beginning the sprint, um, I thought we were uh, on a certain path and um, I've learned, I learned as a, a child to shift in a moment. Um, and I grew up with um, incredible sense of um, community and uh, uh, drive um, and an education through through music and um, through all of those experiences it certainly has uh, prepared me for what I what came that I didn't expect so it really was a sprint um, about uh, humanity about getting back to family to the heart the home of what's most important for all of us as as humans so as much as I wanted to try to uh, keep up with the technology that was offered for this sprint um, that, that we finished several months ago, um, it, was, um, it was a totally different kind of sprint. Um, and uh, Trey was there for um, a lot of that, definitely uh, was a, a, a huge support in that. And uh, that I greatly appreciate, Trey. Um, she and Olena so far have been as close to speaking, while there, there are others out there, and Bernard, who's on call, and Marnie, who is listening. Um, they, they know me well, they understand me well. And um, to reread, finally, at great length, um, Trey, what you fully read, uh, wrote, for, um, for us. Um, uh, Olena, you agree that it speaks so close to um, my heart that Olena had to ask whether these were my words or Trey's words. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing. <laughs> Thank you so what, much. What would you like to know, Lars? How can I um, fill in some blanks? I think uh, let's get back in the next session. Uh, then we talk about that. I want to make sure that we get everybody properly introduced here um, in this part of the call. So we'll get back to that, MB. Is mm -hmm. that, is that, Thank you, Lars. Mm -hmm. so, uh, awesome. So uh, I, 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 I want to hear from Trey, and I also wanted to quickly acknowledge here, uh, same as Emmy, uh, Trey has been generously offering a lot of time to many of us, actually to all of us, and many of us, I think, took some of that time. And personally, I found so much inspiration and advice and support. Um, so Trey, thank you for, for being back here and Great to have you in our tribe uh, again, as as always. So, <laughs> what what have you been up to? Oh my! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> oh my. Uh, well, first of all, uh, MB, thank you for your kind words, and Lars as well. Um, my journey has been uh, multi layered since we last connected, Lars. And I would say that probably the most notable piece has been Salim's uh, talking at the UN, Salim speaking at the UN, uh, and, and the conversations that have emerged throughout the EXO ecosystem with regard to the sustainable development goals. Um, and education, where education lands is one of those as well as partnerships for the cause and, and, and how those are being approached. Some of those are being approached in a very, uh, I'll, I'll use a, a word that's going to sound a little judgmental, but in a scary way. <laughs> and then some of them are being pursued in, in very very human centric ways. And my camp where I come from is I believe in supporting humanity first 
and doing it with technology second versus supporting technology first and then humanity kind of being a bit of an afterthought. Um, so it's really been a journey of conversation and curiosity and stretching belief systems about what's possible and willingness to enter in with the beginner's mind. And so that, that being a part of those conversations has been a real joy and a real privilege. And it's been a very humbling experience. And it's also been really helpful for me to define within myself what I have the bandwidth for and what I don't have the bandwidth for. And so I'm here because I believe in the work that's being done here. And I believe that even if I can't give myself voluntarily to the projects that I can give myself voluntarily, energetically to being part of the inquiry. And that is, uh, you know, so that's why I will be present as, for the calls as many as I can to just hold space. Uh, and, and Justina, you know, knows about this as well, that, that I see myself as, um, as a contributor, as one piece of a very much, much, much bigger puzzle. And, uh, and that's why I'm here. So thank you, Lars. Thank you very much, Trey. Uh, we, we have so much to be grateful for, and you're certainly um, contributing, I think, a lot more than you believe. And uh, so we want to make sure to, uh, to keep acknowledging that. So thank you so much. I want to, I think, I think I want to make sure that we get uh, all the ladies on the call introduced first. Uh, so um, either Mani, if you can speak, or Justina, uh, it would Justina. be one of you going next. Justina, welcome, <laughs> welcome back home. <laughs> yeah, I thought M would stay, stay for Stanford and Galski. I thought it was Jerry. So, sorry. Um, I'll have to share something with you. Um, an explanation of, uh, of me being in my sick, in my sick mode. Let's share. I'm talking to you with 39 degrees of fever. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Get well surprised. quickly. Just I was really surprised uh, <laughs> to cover this, this number. Um, and I will talk to you about, um, I will briefly talk to you um, about numbers as well. But first I wanted to make reference to what you said, Lars, uh, because I really appreciated, I really liked what you said about optimism. <clears throat> because my 39 degrees of fever results from um, a kayak team, kayaking trips with very optimistic millennials. The, their energy is just amazing. They are, they really are change makers, doers, and their engagement in believing in the world becoming a better place is something to really we should learn from. So um, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry that. <clears throat> Uh, I, I'm not including us into the millennial generation, but uh, I believe we um, are a bit uh, older. Anyway, um, I have found a millennial book uh, to um, introduce myself to uh, to Olena. I believe that I haven't seen, and Mania would be a new person as well. Um, I have been introduced to um, uh, the Speed Educate for Life um, by Charlotte Vider, who is also a very uh, active participant uh, here. Um, when I started the journey, um, I started with a different idea that uh, that I that I came up came, came out with, 
because as a result of the Lego idea conference, um, I got an idea of um, publishing a book that would empower children to become masters of their inner states. Uh, I have background in psychology. I've been working in the Montessori environment as well. Um, <clears throat> and I truly believe um, in a very um, precise uh, power of applying certain methods of psychology. I'm sorry, it's 39 degrees space blocking my, my speech. <clears throat> um, into the lives of twins and teens. Myself being a mother of, uh, of one soon to be twin, uh, uh, I have put in pr into practice uh, things that I have studied uh, for uh, years before he was about to become a twin. Uh, with my passion for neuropsych neuropsychology, neuroscience, um, passion for brain, briefly. Um, uh, I have raised two kids, two boys that are very brain literate, and, and this is something that I want to share with, uh, with the rest of children, because I see how uh, knowledge of consciousness of how we function uh, allows us, allows children to better enjoy their lives through master, precisely mastery of their inner states through self-regulation. Um, <clears throat> and in the past months, um, uh, I found another millennial, uh, millennial um, um, reference. I found a millennial illustrator, really amazing one. And I'm happy to introduce to you, let me see, Ale, Leo, and Lola. This will be the, <coughs> this will be the, <laughs> the three characters of, Wonderful. of Zen Masters, yeah, the, <coughs> the, the, and masters the playbook that we have spoken about for a while before. Um, <clears throat> as per the Zen master, we are right now uh, trying to um, uh, capitalize uh, the um, social networking uh, uh, capital of uh, various competitions. And we are right now uh, launching a competition in various um, in various um, groups for writers and illustrators uh, to decide which of the Zen masters will become the Zen master of the book. What would you say? I'm blown away by everything you're showing us here. How, how can anyone possibly choose? <laughs> Do we have to choose one, A or B? Well, what would be a preference? Um, there's already <laughs> there's already trending some trend going on, but yeah, okay. What what does everybody say here? Maybe everybody throws in in the chat uh, in a or a B later mm -hmm. of your favorite. So um, <clears throat> this is one of the things that I'm trying to um, use to build my numbers because this uh, I, I was mentioning I, um, I am to uh, talk about um, numbers. I'm really um, surprised by the slow organic growth of the um, of of the books uh, page. When I worked in Montessori um, area. I was uh, <coughs> opening, um, okay, I was opening, um, I was opening various groups for Montessori fans um, and the growth was exponentially exponential. I have um, multilingual kids, so I also set up a group for multi parents for multilingual kids and it also, it went like this. While the organic growth of, um, of uh, Zen masters is um, 
surprisingly slow. So in the coming um, in the coming weeks, this is something that I will be uh, pointing towards uh, in order to um, in order to uh, make sure that the Kickstarter campaign uh, proves successful. So yeah, that would be news from me. <clears throat> it was really hard to talk to you because I'm almost um, falling short of breath with um, with the um, um, with uh, my pneumonic brain, uh, uh, lungs. But uh, there's one more thing that I wanted to uh, show you. Um, Lars, you were uh, you were mentioning uh, the. Um, you were mentioning the the uh, sandpit methodology, and it uh, <clears throat> it made me recall one thing that has been part of my holiday. <laughs> what no an amazing project! <laughs> but it had been <laughs> before uh, before um, <laughs> spending time with millennials. Um, <laughs> uh, I had my Leo and my Ale uh, doing um, sandpit therapy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that would be the last thing. That, that would <laughs> Fantastic photo. What a nice, what a nice photo. Thank you for sharing that. And let me just quickly share, uh, Justina, that we have a winner out of A and B. We pick B. Yes. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> The community has okay. spoken. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so this is my favorite. That was a, a quick test. <laughs> it it yes. means that we so much in symphony because this one is my favorite. My illustrators go. My illustrator goes for for A, and for now A it sounds it seems to be trending, but I'm not giving up. <laughs> okay. I hope to hear more feedback. Uh, that will, yeah. we'll see. We'll see. I, we definitely, I definitely will go for, for, um, that was, for the right feedback. Mm -hmm. That was the outcome of this little test. It Thank was a clear B, but yeah. <laughs> it's up to you. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Excellent. I, I'll yes. contact you, by the way. Um, I know a company that you simply need to work with on uh, about the book and getting that to market. So, um, I'll get back to you and, and connect you. That's a nice timing because when I was in Poland, I contacted a publisher and he wants to meet me. And this was my like B alternative, plan B, kind of to make me feel safe. And yeah. it's definitely um, um, not my plan, e, plan, plan A, but uh, yeah, that would be nice to explore this, this option here. Thanks, thanks Lars. It was really nice to see you. Uh, Olena, uh, Bernard, uh, Marnie, you're joining an amazing tribe. Uh, yes. It's it's um, it's a really great community, um, and I hope to see you here more. Okay, thanks. Absolutely. Care, Justina. Thank you, Justina. Uh, let's let's um, let's get the next introduction onto the table. Um, who wants to go next? I'm not sure if Mani wants to, to, to speak or Bernhard, Bernhard. Um, can you hear me? This is Bernard. Yes, we can hear you, Bernard. Go in, go oh. for it. Hello, uh, I want to Hello. apologize. Let me know if, if the um, sound is too much. I'm actually traveling right now and I have my headphones in. Uh, is it's this good. sound okay? It's really good. Oh, great. Clear. Okay. Yeah. I was in and out of the meeting for a while and now I'm finally getting into a big city area so I can actually hear better. Um, so th thank you so much for having me in the meeting. It's a real honor to be here. I'm uh, very dear friends with MB and I, th I saw Mike Gibson's name on there as well. I don't know if he's in the meeting, um, but uh, she's the one who invited me. So thanks MB. And uh, so I guess, all right, introductions. Um, I am a French horn player. I currently teach and the associate professor of horn at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, where I've taught for the past uh, nine years. Um, prior to that, or during that, actually, I worked with uh, MB very closely and uh, with her husband, Chuck, and the Canadian Brass. 
I was a member of for about eight years. And I've played in various orchestras. Um, uh, let's see. Um, I have three kids. I have a wife. And I'm very interested in education. I currently run a um, music festival in New Hampshire every summer uh, just for French horns. Uh, it's been going on for 25 years. My teacher founded it, then when he passed away, it was um, I took over it uh, with the board of directors, and I've been running that for the past three years. And I currently maintain a schedule of um, solo playing and chamber music playing and teaching. Um, so that's kind of what I've done in my life. Um, but in terms of, I've listened to everybody speak, and I'm so inspired by all these things I'm hearing or everybody's journey. Um, I think if I were just to give a little bit of background, you know, I was trained as a classical musician. I had aspirations as a young player to become just a traditional um, horn player, an orchestra, I suppose, playing classical music. Um, along the way, I kind of had different goal changes. Um, one, one thing that happened to me is I sort of eventually began to abandon my original goals once I started to kind of understand more of what I personally liked and wanted and valued in my life. And that led me kind of directly to um, the Canadian Brass, which led me to MB and Chuck, um, which really transformed my life. Like it really opened my, my eyes and my mind to totally new paradigms of music, education, um, just ways of looking at things from my otherwise fairly narrow view of what art and music and education really what what, what I thought it was and um, since that time I think I've done a lot of thinking about education and now being in charge of this music festival and teaching at the university in a very free setting um, I have a really strong interest in the empowerment of youth um, I mean, particularly with my art form music but especially in the areas of critical thinking um, and creativity, which I try to infuse into my teaching, and I'm trying to get more and more um, versed in that. I'm starting a new class this year in um, uh, improvisation for classical musicians, including myself. <laughs> Something that's new to me, but I, I'm wanting to expand my teaching into um, much more creative, in much more creative ways. Um, if anything, just to benefit myself, because I, I never got that as a young student. So, anyways. Um, I, I see that, you know, the, with the public schools, um, um, some of the systemic issues with education and how it can be harmful, uh, with, especially with my own kids. And so we, we, we make great attempts to supplement the, um, the curriculum they're getting with, you know, my wife is a music therapist and encouragement with our own kids. So I guess um, that's just kind of that's what I've done it's kind of who I am and um, I'll leave it at that wonderful thank you very much for this introduction and for giving us the chance to get to, to know you I know you are you are driving and drive safely um, and we look very much forward to get to know you uh, even more on the many coming calls and you and and the rest of, of the team around you uh, who are close to Canadian brass and and all of that. I, I know that you uh, will play a key role in the future of education uh, and we need to figure out how, how to turn that key uh, to let music and the arts uh, inspire us and, and help us learn because that's how it works. It, 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 it is extremely powerful and we know that. And so we need to bring this into place. I'm extremely excited in the, that you are um, inviting uh, such fantastic friends of, of yours to the call here. So welcome on board, um, Bernard. Uh, welcome to our tribe here. Thanks, Lars. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. <laughs> I'll mute myself One. now. <laughs> <laughs> OK. <laughs> Drive safely there. Gabriel, my friend, uh, it's your turn to introduce yourself. And uh, obviously, I'm very 
uh, keen because uh, I want to hear also about uh, your your project, which is ongoing. And I'm hearing a little bit from from uh, Klaus and Peter. But welcome back to to the tribe, Gabriel. How are you? How are Thank things? You. What's happening? Thank you, Lars. Hi, everybody. It's a pleasure again to see everybody here connected and sharing their stories. All of them are amazing and very inspiring. And I think that's one of the most important things about a community. You know, like this possibility of sharing stories, experiences, uh, inspiring others. So thank you everybody for sharing your stories and inspiring us. So uh, just a little bit of myself. Uh, I'm Argentinian. Uh, I live in Miami since 2011. Uh, and as many, we ha I had a, a corporate uh, experience in, in the airline industry for a long, long time. Then uh, I decided to quit that job and I created a consulting company, mainly focus, focusing on training and corporate training on some specific areas such as lean startup, lean methodology, problem solving, some, some skills. So we've been, I've been working with this company for the last five years now. Uh, and I was uh, one of the participants of the sprint of the first Educate for Life sprint early this year. And it was such a, an incredible learning journey. Uh, so, I, and at the same time, as I was, part, was experiencing that, that learning journey, I was more involved in the Open Exo community. So I started my, my process of certification and learning more about the Exo framework. So at the end, this year for me was a really a, a transformational process uh, for me. Uh, I learned so many things and I'm eager now to start applying all of those things uh, in my professional career. So and w when we started with our project in the first in the sprint uh, for Educate for Life, I joined a team that was led by Klaus. I think Klaus is on, on the call too, so he can explain a little bit further about the project. But I joined that team that was led by Klaus with the, the idea just to how to, we can improve uh, the skill sets that the SMEs employees has, because we all understand that SMEs now are facing a huge, huge challenge uh, without having the, 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 the right set of skills for their employees. So most of their SMEs are gonna be disrupted, uh, and, but, but they have a, a huge opportunity to, to tackle this issue and start working with their employees to upskilling them and really, be the disruptors and not be disrupted. So that's the main goal, uh, how we can approach the SMEs uh, as, as a channels for really give them the tools that they need to upskill their employees. Uh, and when we are talking about upskilling, that's a, that's a very broad definition. You know, we, when we need to talking about upskilling, we need to start defining which skill at the end. There's, there are so many skills they are to, that need to be developed. So we had a lot of discussions from the moment that we finished with our project, a lot of pivotings, a lot of changes uh, in the, the path that we took from our project. Uh, at the beginning, our idea was just to create a community like the one like Educate for Life, but mainly focusing on learning for SMEs. And that was our original idea. But then we decided to move for a more let me put it that way, more tactical or more practical thing is not just having a community because we saw how difficult it is actually to build a community and keep everybody engaged and really uh, has the, the benefits of, of being that community. So uh, we are starting now, we are in the process of finishing all the materials to have our first webinar aimed for the SME managers. Uh, and this webinar, I think it's, our main goal here is to start uh, raising the awareness of this issue in, on SME managers. Uh, it's just like putting this seed in SME managers, saying that there is a lot of things that you can do. You need to start doing something right now. 
Uh, otherwise, your, your company would be disrupted in the really near future. So we have almost all the material for this webinar. We've been working with Klaus and Peter, selecting and curating material from different sources. Uh, our idea is just to put on the table the, the EXO methodology, the EXO framework, just to show how we can apply this type of tools and techniques and methodology for, for SMEs. Uh, so we are in that process. We have all the material and now we are putting them together and having it kind of uh, nicely designed. Uh, and hopefully you wanna have this, as this webinar in the next, we, what we expect is coming maybe in October, if I'm not wrong, maybe Klaus can correct me. But then we, are, we are in that process and we will need a lot of help uh, spreading the, the voice, uh, inviting SME managers, inviting people that they are on that field that might be interested in participating. So as long as we have it, everything together and a, a specific date, for sure I'm gonna go back, we come back to all the community to ask for some help to spread the voice and ask for uh, recommendations and all that stuff to get more people involved in, in that first webinar. So that, the, the webinar is that, that this first step and there are a lot of things that go after that, but let's go step by step. And this is the, the first step that we need to go to do it something out of the building and just to show what we can do. So we are very excited about that. Wonderful, Gabriel. Thank you so much for your introduction and also your update here. And I am, I am in touch also with, with you and, and Peter and Klaus and yeah. uh, we'll be doing this webinar uh, together uh, because of this important uh, cause. It's very, very important that our business leaders are uh, getting an understanding of what's really happening here. So uh, I look yeah. very much forward to do this, yeah. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for all your support. Uh, we had a, a couple of already calls going back and forth and exchanging ideas. And from all of them, we, we took some learnings. So I think that now we are in that process of, in the last mile, you know, like finishing this material and putting this together to really get out there and show it. Exactly. This, this is amazing, right? The team that, that keeps going, right? They understand the importance of working on this and they, they do it, right? So we need to celebrate when we have done this, uh, this webinar. We'll celebrate all together um, and, and share it with everybody. And Gabriel, I'm going to, to tell your whole group, and I know Klaus, he is not here on the call, but he has been here. Maybe he had to drop off. But yeah. I, I want to share with all of you, I just received a lunch invitation from, um, it's an organization here in Denmark. It's, a, it's sponsored by the government, but it's actually uh, a large number of consultants that work to support actually business leaders and primarily in the SME space. Good. Uh, and they do it by you know, consulting those business leaders uh, and bringing different methodologies to them and, and offer different insights and advice. And I'm going to, to ask this, uh, this organization, this network to uh, invite everybody to this webinar. Right? I think this can be an amplifier, um, yeah. at least here in Denmark. Then we need to, to just add the rest of the world, but it's, uh, it's immediately available to me and they've reached out to uh, because they're interested to, uh, to talk. So I think this is an opportunity. And obviously, we will all be uh, sharing uh, the invitations to the webinar in, in our respective network. So let's get the word out and let's do this. It's a big milestone, and I'm excited to, to hear uh, Thank about you. this. Thank you. Yeah, and, and something very important that we are always mentioning when we, when we meet with Klaus and Peter, uh, we, we have our meetings scheduled, weekly meetings. Uh, so even if we don't have any, anything to share, really any, any new thing to share, we still connected 
uh, every every week just to yeah. stay in touch. You know, we, we, we understood that it's very important. Uh, yeah. Klaus and Peter are, are in Denmark. I mean, I'm in Miami. Yeah. So we, we, we see that it's very important to keep that routine going, even though that is not something very new to share and not any moving forward, something, something very specific, but just to keep in touch and keep it together and stay connected. So I think that's one of the things that really help us keep going and getting so far now. Absolutely agree. It's about keep doing it. We'll yeah. keep doing these community calls and we'll keep supporting the initiative. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Um, <clears throat> this, this has been amazing. I'll just give uh, Mani a last chance to, to, to also speak if you want, if you are able to technically <laughs> where you are. <clears throat> I'm not sure if you are. Um, okay, you have to, to leave the call, absolutely. And I think we, we all have to in, in the next, uh, in about eight minutes or so. <clears throat> so I wanna say that uh, the ideation session, I wanna do it in, in our online community. So also we can involve everybody, regardless of time zone, and regardless of whether they can be on this call or not. Uh, so we'll just save that for uh, a separate activity. I'll announce it in in our uh, community platform, uh, and um, and I really want to um, thank everybody for for being here on the call today. It's it's very very inspiring to hear personal stories uh, and to talk even about you know, smaller things that are coming to mind. It's such, such as bandwidth and stuff like that, but it's very important to prioritize things in our lives. And, uh, and um, I, I'm also working like uh, an, a maniac around the clock, uh, but I made this decision that I want this community to meet again and again and again, just like Gabriel, Klaus and Peter, because it's the only way to make progress, to keep moving forward, even in small steps. It's mm -hmm. about doing those small steps every day. It's the only way, right? So we are going to do this, and uh, I'm going to uh, always take the lead on inviting to these calls. And there's going to be other formats of collaboration, um, and even um, another sprint uh, later this year. One of the questions I'd meant to ask you today, but I'll ask you on the platform will be when another sprint would be relevant to run um, in terms, should it be end of this year? Should it be beginning of next year? Um, so <laughs> but there will be other activities as well that are coming up. And in just, I uh, just wanted to share that I'm, I've been doing quite a few speaking engagements in the last three, four months on the future of education. Um, I've been part of several sprints uh, with companies who are very active in the educational field. And now they understand they have to transform. They have to do everything differently. And I'm, I'm, I'm just about to start a sprint uh, with a, a, a very large business school also um, and, and there are many many other activities driven by actually um, businesses and uh, educational institutions that realize that they have to change and they want to be uh, they want to reach out for help for inspiration they want to be part of a community like this and I'm very excited about how we can all collaborate on making change happen. So just to, just wanted to share my optimism <laughs> with every one of you. <laughs> I got, I got to eat the, my own, I know I got to drink my own champagne here. Right? <laughs> so, not about eating dog food, it's the champagne that we are drinking. So uh, lots of amazing things are happening and you are all part of it and you will all be invited to, to join 
in different ways. Uh, when you feel you can and you want to, you have the opportunity. So it's all going to be uh, posted in our community platform. So if you're not already there, make sure to get in there. Uh, the app is called Mighty Networks and just reach out to, uh, to me if you need any help on, on getting in there. So any, any closing words from, from anyone? And MB will be talking more and every one of us will be talking more about next steps. Any closing words in the last three, four minutes before many of us have to run off? For me, it's just so good to see everyone and I've missed you all. Um, and uh, I'm just very excited, looking forward to our, our weekly calls. It means uh, a lot and I think we can get a lot, uh, a lot done. Um, I've had a, a reach out from TEDx Toronto um, who they would like to partner with opening day. And to me, opening day is all of you together. So the question is, what do we wanna do? Exciting. Obviously, it's, it's a yes, <laughs> but what do we want to do with the opportunity? Getting the chance to communicate opening day is, is, is obviously a yes, thank you, right? <laughs> the theme is rise. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. We will, let's, let's think about that and get back to you. Um, obviously, I'm keen to hear, I'm sure you have uh, some thoughts of your own MB. So mm -hmm. there's also opportunities in November um, 2019 in Hamilton with events already uh, being arranged. Part of it is in acknowledging the past, those in arts and education. Um, and uh, and it, to me, it's an opportunity to showcase new systems, organizations, um, communications, um, education uh, at, at that time. Um, it's a great space to be able to do that. The cost of living for, for Canada is, is lower. Um, the high level of musicianship that'll ha happen, it's, you know, uh, our, our Canadian government um, way back used Canadian brass, um, riser singers, some other musical entities to help. Um, um, motivate and inspire the conversations for for change and um, I think some of you already know those stories and and what it it is uh, the change and the relationships that were developed as a result so I think it's a beautiful opportunity it's it a moral is. obligation for us to all come together and do that again shout it up to the world another major milestone to achieve together. And we'll see you on that stage, MB, to <laughs> tell that story. I look very much forward to that. I can see it. I, I can envision that. It's, it will happen. And, uh, but we'll be there in spirit or maybe even in person and, and you know, enjoying every single moment of that. So let's, well, let's, this, let's this prepare story, together. Okay, well, the story almost, uh, uh, apparently actually started in Ottawa with uh, the symphony, with the University of Toronto, uh, with um, the Toronto Symphony and with the Ottawa, um, with the, the National Arts Centre Orchestra who are also celebrating their 50th anniversary. So they're very, very, very special um, stories to, um, to be told and opportunities for us to showcase uh, a new way forward together. Thank you, MB, for that fantastic uh, update. So let's let's make that happen, um, and, and and share spread the word of opening day and uh, TEDx can be really an amplifier to uh, to reach everyone. Right. So thank you, awesome. Let's keep talking. Any anyone else would like to share a few closing words before we run off to other busy activities? <laughs> Just gratitude, Lars, and uh, very much looking forward to seeing what the new second wave is going to look like. Oh, yeah. Lots coming. Lots coming. It's super exciting and super important. So, uh, thank you. <laughs> Just wait till you hear what Trey has up her sleeve. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've heard some of it. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Gabriel, it's wonderful to see to see you here now, and it's nice yeah. to meet you and in person. Um, 
visually. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we are as much in person as we can be today. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Olena, for, for, for being part of our tribe and Bernard and Gabriel for, you know, always being part of, of this and Let's, let's keep doing this. So thank you so much for your time and uh, you're all blessed and uh, see you soon. Let's change the world. Thank you for now. <laughs> thank you. Bye, Have everyone. Everyone, everybody. Have a good week. Thank you, Lars. You. Thank you, Trey. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. That was muted all.